Hello, everyone. On the 16th of September, we had the third FPF discuss at the Florence School of Banking and Finance of the Robert Schumann Center at the European University Institute. The debate focused on the following motion. This House believes that the Stability and Growth Pact 3% deficit rule should be abandoned. Our proponent was Jean Pisani Ferry, who is an economist and a public policy expert, holds the Tommaso Padua Schioppa Chair of the European University Institute and is a professor of economics with Sciences Po Paris. Our opponent was Volker Vinland, also an economist and who holds the endowed chair of monetary economics at the Institute for Monetary and Financial Stability since 2012, where he also serves as managing director. FPS Discuss has a very innovative and interactive format. The debate brings together two contestants to, dis to discuss a specific motion. It starts with opening remarks, followed by a rebuttal from both sides, so that there is enough room for interactions with all participants, including with polls and votes on the motion. So let's have a look at the results of the polls. The first poll asks whether the Stability and Growth Pact 3% deficit rule should be abandoned. The possible answers were yes and no. 86 participants answered this poll, and within the voting participants, 52% answered no. This tight result was a nice starting point for our two speakers. In the second poll, we asked our participants their view on the fact that the EU activated in March 2020 the General Exemption Clause of the Stability and Growth Pact in order to make it possible for member states to support their economies. In total, 91 participants answered the poll. And among the four options, more than half of our voting participants, so 53% of participants, answer option D. The debt, the debt and deficit targets should be redefined before the exemption clause is deactivated. So to keep it simple, according to the results of the two first polls, in the opinion of the majority of our participants, the 3% deficit rule should not be abandoned, but both the debt and deficit targets should be redefined before being the exemption clause is deactivated. Let's now briefly interrupt and watch some of the highlights of the debate. What exactly is the question? I don't think the question is if we need rules in the European Monetary Union. In my view, we do need rules. Some people think we don't need any rule. I think we need rules because there is interdependence, there is externality, as we say, as we economists say, uh, meaning that a country with an excessive debt that uh, you know, risks um, uh, insolvency represents a threat to the stability of the monetary union as a whole. There are the risks of reforming, there are the risks of not reforming. I think the risk of not reforming uh, uh, today are, are higher because of the inadequacy of the rules, because of the risk of a low legitimacy of the rules that, that, that they are. Um, if you, know, you start uh, to, to try to impose rules that look outdated to, to public opinion, the risk is that simply people will refuse uh, to abide by the rules because they will say those rules have no legitimacy. So my answer is no. Keep the 3% headline deficit rule and keep the 60% debt to GDP rule of the Stability and Growth Pact. They have actually been at the core of the treaties from the start of 1992. They are simple, they are clear, and they are transparent. The complex framework, therefore, needs to be not a get rid of the central rules, but it needs to be refocused. That's basically uh, what the German Council of Economic Experts uh, has proposed. And uh, the number of exceptions and the degree of discretion for the European Commission should be reduced. What if we don't do that? Or if we actually follow the advice and on top of it, kick out the few transparent elements, the 3% headline deficit rule and the 60% debt rule. I mean, do you, do you really want my realistic assessment? There was also a question, is it realistic to uh, reduce that? Well, my realistic assessment under that proposal is that we will see all over the Euro area what we have seen in France. We will see a repeated ratcheting up. Um, it makes sense in bad times, but no improvement in good times, maybe a worsening in good times. Uh, so it will become a race to the top. Who gets first to the next peak debt level right before the next crisis. 
I have a sort of philosophical disagreement with Volker and then some technical points. The, the philosophical disagreement is about what he said on what the role of the rules. Let me put it very clearly. I don't think the European rules are there to correct the failing of democracy at national level. They're there to address a problem of, as I said, externality, uh, the, the danger that is involved in inadequate fiscal policy for the partner countries and for the euro area as a whole. Um, there are, you know, dysfunctional dimension in the way our democracies uh, approach deal with fiscal policy, but that's not the rule. Uh, that's not the role, sorry, of, of the EU rules to correct that. Managing the need for for, for fiscal action through the exemption clause um, would lead to an odd situation in which you would have to activate the general exemption clause much too often. I don't think that democracy is dysfunctional. Democracy is actually perfectly capable to generate institutions that bind the hands of politicians who are vying to win, win the next election. In our country, it's in two weeks. In your country, it's in a few months. Um, so democracy are able to bind the hands, to tie the hands of politicians and governments to some extent by creating institutions and by creating rules. And that's what we have done. Um, and that's why we need to keep it, and that's why we need to keep the transparent and clear elements. Now, in terms of what's the national responsibility, we all have national fiscal rules. Um, if you think that uh, France is not on a good track uh, and you want to do it with the national fiscal rules, that would be a different debate. Uh, but uh, we also have the European rules. And indeed, the point of the European rules is to protect monetary union. Let's now examine the results of the remaining polls. The third poll asked our participants' opinion concerning the change of the EU's fiscal parameters. This is the 3% deficit threshold and the 60% debt threshold. In total, 90 participants answered the poll. Option B was the most voted option, as 37% of our participants think that the current conditions call for a more frequent reliance on fiscal policy for stabilization purposes, as these may not be compatible with the existing thresholds. The fourth poll focused on today's economic setting being very different from when the SGP was designed over 20 years ago. This question asked what would be the most important feature if the EU fiscal framework were to be revised in the upcoming months. There were five possible options and one participant during the debate even suggested to add a sixth option, which was simplicity. In total, 78 participants answered the poll. 32% chose sustainability and also 32% voted for a combination of all these five elements. These results show that probably different features need to be taken into account. Finally, the fifth poll asked again whether the Stability and Growth Pact's 3% deficit rule should be abandoned. 75 participants answered this last poll, which are less nine participants than poll number one. This time, once the debate was about to end, 52% of our participants answered yes, which again shows very tight results. Now it's time to listen to the closing statements of Jean and Volker. Thank you for joining us in this debate and we're looking forward to seeing you online in the next FBF Discuss. If you want sustainability, uh, simplicity is key. Rules that are complex don't help because you will always find a way around them. And the rules, how we have used them in the last 15 years basically um, have received too much complexity, too much discretion. So there's no lack of flexibility. We need to need not increase flexibility. We need to decrease it to achieve sustainability. Where we disagree, but you know, we repeatedly address that, is um, what this target should be based on. And, and you think that this should be based on numbers uh, that are, I agree, clear, uh, simple, uh, understandable. Um, and I think they should be based on, on targets that have legitimacy, legitimacy because um, they, they, there is a reasoning behind, there is an economic reasoning behind. 
and I sort of trust the ability of people to understand an economic reasoning and to understand why in the end some efforts have to be made uh, because uh, risks have to be avoided. But you, I think that you need to assess, name this risk, and this risk should be perceived as being serious enough to trigger action.